Welcome to the channel, everybody, and thanks for checking out the channel, which is called Ham Radio Dude. Currently, there are several portable carbon fiber mass solutions on the market and a number of videos about how you can mount your portable carbon fiber mast. However, it has been asked that I go over some things, so I took some time to take a look at the Little Dude 6 and what some good mounting solutions for the ground would be and also for something like a picnic bench. And I should probably make a note that if they do work for the Little Dude 6, they should work for the Soda Beams Carbon 6, as well as the Pota 20 mast, because the Little Dude 6 is a little bit thicker in diameter. And so with that, we're gonna go out to the field today and take a look at these masts. And by the field, I mean, we're gonna go to my front yard. Today's first solution is our first one because it's easiest for me to get to. It's right here, a camera tripod, or in this case, a green screen tripod. I got this at Goodwill. I got a set of them for like 10 bucks. And I was okay because I have so many of them using this one. But it should be noted that the nice thing about a tripod is they do pack up fairly small and they could be very light depending on the material they're made of. And of course, if you needed to, you could put this on a picnic bench. And that brings up the point that some places you go to operate portable radio won't allow you to penetrate into the earth to guide your mast. And this would be a solution. People are going to worry about how flimsy it might be, you know, is it going to fall over with the wind? And what I would recommend to you, which I think I have a few years ago, is to put sandbags under here or some kind of weight on the bottom of the tripod. As you can see down here, there's plenty of room for some kind of weight to hang off the bottom or just to hold on to these little sections. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that they're strong enough to hold it, but then you should be fine. Today, I think I'm going to go without it. There's no wind and we should be all right. Of course, your next step would be to take out your mast and take the bottom section off of your mast after you extend each of the sections out. Remember, this carbon fiber mast is only a pound and some of them are even lighter, so it should be fairly easy to go ahead and take this mast and put it over that section of the tripod and it fits nicely, about 34 millimeters in diameter for this mast in particular. One thing I did, though, is I taped the top section of the tripod. And the reason I did that is I don't want metal scraping against the carbon fiber. I suppose maybe a 3D printed cap would work just fine, but in a pinch, this works out just well. And let's see what it looks like from far out. It looks groovy. Far out, man. Now it is gonna depend on what tripod you use, but the added advantage of using this tripod here is I have about another three and a half feet. So my six meter mast really becomes about 23 or 24 feet. Pretty nice. Now I hope that that came through audio wise okay, because as you could hear, I'm probably fighting something and I just can't speak very well. I'm boosting up the gain on these microphones to be able to hear me. Sorry. All right, back to the episode though. For the next one, I have two different solutions. One's homemade and the other one is store-bought. So if you don't want to make something and learn about how you could throw things together to make something work, go over to the Bass Pro Shop and get one of these. I'll tell you about it here in just a second. But first, proposition warning for California residents. Everything gives you cancer. And with that, I went over to Walmart and on clearance for $2.97, they had this fishing rod holder. I cut off the top, I went over to Ace Hardware, and Ace Hardware had one of these super large uh, tent spikes. All I did is I took the super large tent spike and I leveled it flush with the rod holder. Now this rod holder diameter is just a little bit wider than the Little Dude 6, so again it should fit for your Soda Beam 6, your Pota 20, and all those good things. I'm going to break in here real quick, and uh, sometimes people ask if I will go into further depth about what each of the products are I'm speaking of. And so in this case, I'm talking about the Little Dude 6, the Poda 20, and the Soda Beams Carbon 6. And those are all portable carbon fiber masks, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, just a little bit more depth, though. The Little Dude 6 is my personal brand. And then the Poda 20 would be Gigaparts brand. It's a collaboration with K8MRD. And the Soda Beams, and the Soda Beams Carbon 6 is Soda Beams brand as well. As you can see here, but again, though, with the cost of the spike and with this $2.97 rod holder and these hose clamps, you're looking at probably around $10 or $12. And for $13, you can go over to Bass Pro Shop 
and get one of these that's already made. This fits just fine inside of this tube as well, meaning it should fit either of the other masts and uh, pretty interesting quality. Now, one of the differences is when you have that plastic tense bike, it is a lot spikier on the bottom here, which might make this hard to put into the ground if your soil is dry, like extremely dry, or if you have a rocky soil. So maybe neither of these solutions will work. Utilizing the ground here at the home, it's kind of a difficult ground to penetrate into as it has been fairly dry. And with that, I mention it because maybe not all these solutions work for you. What I did find was my homemade device was easier to hammer into the ground with that nice flat spot from the tent spike, as well as a sharper point on the bottom. Although I do suspect if you have the Bass Pro Shop version, in different environments it will work, and you might even be able to sharpen it off yourself. Now, along the same lines as those last two I just showed you, we have a beach umbrella holder. A beach umbrella holder is perfect because it's made of very strong ABS-like material. I think it is ABS. And of course, all we have to do is screw it into the ground. As you can see, I've done it here with dirt and it seems to hold just fine. One thing that you should note though is take this screw out completely if you're using it with the Little Dude 6 because this, well, that's a tight fit. And if you have the screw in there, here's what's gonna happen. And maybe even if you don't have the screw in there, that's what's gonna happen. And I say that because inside you can see that it's pretty black. But again, with this being the thickest of the masts, this should work for the POTA 20 and the Soda Beam 6 just fine. And I have not had a problem with this, but you might. Let's take a look at it on the ground here. I have a few of these and here's the key takeaway from them. If you're going to drive it into the ground, you need to make sure you don't get just the bottom threads but you go up past those top threads because those top threads are angled in a way that once you twist it all the way in, it helps secure it into the ground. And you're just not going to have a very secure bond if all you're doing is using those bottom threads like you see here. All right, and our next solution is this right here. It's a ground spike and a tube. Uh, this tube plastic, I've actually been trying to step on it. If you could see, I weakened the plastic just a little bit but it's actually still okay. And what I really like about this is the fact that I could take this spike and I could put it inside the tube and I could screw it in so that if I'm traveling, it's less room, it's more compact, but also less likely to, to spike me in the hand. So I think that that's a great solution. Then all we do is we unscrew it, screw it back in on the bottom, we'll spike it into the ground. One thing that we should point out though is this tube dimension it's gonna be a tight fit for the little dude. Let's take a look. I mean, now we got it in there and it actually seems pretty good, right? I mean, if I, if I shake it enough, I'd probably make it go. But where we talk about maybe a potential issue is the fact that it won't go all the way down with the little dude. Again, other masts will be just fine. And then all we gotta do is we gotta put our mast in the air and that's it. Again, maybe it's a little bit windy and maybe you wanna do something. And we'll talk about guying solutions here in just a minute, but that actually seems to be okay. I think it'll work just fine. I think this is the best solution so far. About two years ago now, I came out with 25 foot carbon fiber mast, a little bit bulkier, but it did a great job. And during that time, I came up with two guys like this. Actually, they were quite inspired by the buddy pole design. But I think that these will be a great solution. See, the thing about this is, if you're trying to guy your mast and you have this topper on, yeah, you could take it off, but I don't really recommend taking this off, putting it on. It's on there pretty good for a reason. And so when we take these, which are available on thingiverse.com, we should be able to easy guide them. I think that's what I call it, easy guys onto one of the sections. If you wanna see the video on the Easy Guy, I really encourage you to go check out the link in the video below, but this will be a great guying solution and it will put the guys on the bottom portion of the third section. We have just two more solutions right now and I would encourage you guys to go check out K8MRD's video about guying because he makes up a solution using a hose clamp as well and I think that it's an amazing solution. Again, check it out, I'll link it below. And I am going to piggyback off of his idea, newly designed nylon 230 3D printed prints. And this will allow me to guy things. Excuse me, this will allow me to guy things. 
And I also always carry some of these Velcro straps. And the thought process is this. If I could take a Velcro strap and I could tighten it, maybe it's even on the second section on the bottom. As you can see now it's tight, but I want to have just enough room to be able to get three of these hooks inside on here spaced evenly apart. And then it might look something like this. Of course, then you just take your 550 cord and your tent spikes and you have it in the ground just like this, like this, and like this. You know what? I'm going to try this one out. I just want to point out that if you are going to do something like this, as you can see here, I've burned the ends of my 550 cord without burning the ends. What will happen is eventually all this fray from inside will start to come apart and you don't really want that. It becomes a mess and it's harder to fish through holes. I did not take my own advice about the 550 cord and so currently it's already coming apart. And that's why I mentioned it to you. But also two things to note, my 10 spikes are not all the way in the ground. Typically in the field they would be. I just don't feel comfortable around here doing that. With this 10 spike, I should have moved it over here a little bit more so they're equally spaced, but everything seems to be okay. And this would hold the wire antenna with no problem. If you want to use these nylon little clips, I have them on my Thingiverse page. They're free to download. I used nylon 230, but you could probably get away with ASA or maybe even PETG or PLA. The reason I used nylon 230 though is they're very flexible and they'll rarely, rarely break. Now you could also use the same kind of guying solution with the easy guys like I mentioned just a few moments ago. Again, check out that video and it would just be up here so you might need a little more 550 cord. I should also point out that any of these solutions back here that you use, whether it be the umbrella holder or the fishing rod holders, you could also guy those off as well for more stability. If you go to Ace Hardware and you get this Charlotte Pipe PVC, I believe it's Schedule 80. And there is a difference between the different schedules, but you'll notice it fits inside the mast perfectly. Weird coincidence. And if you get the inch and a half Charlotte, it should fit over the mast just perfectly. With just enough room in there. So that's something to consider as well if you're trying to build any of these or you have your own unique idea. Uh, it really was a coincidence, by the way. And it should go without saying that any time you're going to take off the bottom portion of your mast, Keep an eye out for this thing because, well, I should have made it bright orange. It's a pain to find. Our final solution is if you were at a picnic bench. But we're going to just take a look over here on the table and we're going to combine a couple of things. I talked about the super clamp for ham radio a few months ago or maybe seven months ago. You should check out that video because I show you with the super clamp how you can mount just about anything. And that's what I did. I mounted this rod holder that we talked about earlier in the episode. And this is perfect to clamp onto a picnic bench. So if you are handy capable or you just have a difficult time getting on and off the ground, can't penetrate the earth, this might be the solution for you. It's hooked up to a table here. If you didn't have a table, think about it. You can find maybe a, a grill. There's a lot of grills at State Park. Use your safety, make sure it's not hot. It's gonna be dirty and so forth, but there might be other places you can mount it onto. Which this also just gave me another idea I want to mention before we wrap up. And that idea is about two years ago or three years ago, I made the Hamstick Commander and then I made the portable Hamstick Commander, which used one of those magnetic bases from Tram that have three magnets on them and the middle is a three eighths inch adapter. It wouldn't be that hard to find a way and to think outside the box to convert the threaded portion of this tube to fit onto the magnet. So now you can have your ham radio mast on your vehicle on a magnet mount. Again, don't drive technically conductive, so you could really harm yourself if you hit a power pole. I got to mention all that stuff, but uh, that's not too bad of another idea. And uh, let's go wrap things up. Today we were out in the field and used the field and you got to see a lot of different ideas that I've kind of came up with or I found or ideas piggybacking off of other people. I think that that's the joy of what I'm trying to show you here is there is a lot of engineering that you could do to make your own mast, but there are also other options out there. It's gonna depend very much so on your location, what your soil or your ground is like. Maybe you can't even pound into the earth. And in that case, maybe you have the mast leaning against a tree and the wire is pushing this way so that the mast 
is basically leaning against a tree. Maybe you have it in some rocks and the mast is being held up by those rocks. You just got to start to get creative. And that's what I was trying to show you today. I hope this did help you. And I hope you find a solution that works best for you when mounting your portable ham radio mast. Hope you have a good one. I got to go rest this voice. 73.